everybody, this is Patchy from Infinisys.com, and I'm going to show you how to install Backtrack 3 to your hard drive. For some reason, Remote Exploit removed the GUI installer from Backtrack 3. So we're going to have to manually copy over those files to your hard drive. In this video, I'm making some assumptions. I'm assuming that you have a single hard drive, and you want to install Backtrack 3 to the entire thing. This process will overwrite any files that you currently have on your hard drive, so make sure you back up all the files that you want to keep before you do this. Also, this video will not describe how to dual boot Backtrack 3 and some other operating system. If you want to do that, you're going to have to watch an older vlog that I made that describes how to install Backtrack 2 and uh, dual boot it with Windows. The only difference between those two videos is instead of installing Backtrack with the GUI installer, you're going to have to use the manual method that I show in this video. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing you need to do is boot into Backtrack 3 from the CD. Once Backtrack is loaded, the first thing we want to do is make the different partitions on our hard drive. We're going to make two partitions, one for all the files and a smaller one for the swap drive. Basically what the swap drive is for is when your computer runs out of physical memory, the operating system can use a technique called swapping where it will temporarily store uh, memory on the hard drive. And to partition our hard drive, we're going to use the, the program called FDisk. You just type in FDisk, uh, a space, and then your hard drive. Uh, devices are located in the dev folder. And as you can see here, I'm putting in SDA. Um, this label will be different uh, depending on what type of hard drive you have. Uh, if you're not sure what your hard drive is called, just navigate to the dev folder and just look around in there. Alright. You can use P to display the current partitions and since there's nothing on this hard drive, no partitions show up. You need to type N to create a new partition. We're going to select a primary partition. Uh, the partition number is 1. Just push enter when it says first cylinder. And then for the last cylinder, is, it's going to be the size of your hard drive. And since this first partition is our primary partition with all our files on it, we want to give it a whole bunch of space. Um, I'm going to give it about 7.5 gigabytes, leaving about 512 megabytes of swap space. And as you can see there, it shows up in the partition table. Alright, now we're going to create another hard drive. It's going to be a primary partition also. It's going to be the second one. And just push enter for the first cylinder. And then the last cylinder just will be the default size, so just give it the rest of the size. And now we need to change the ID of our second partition to a swap partition. And that's just 82. And this is what our partition table looks like when it's all done. And just push W to write the partition table. And now I'm just going to open up QD Parted to show graphically how your hard drive is set up. As you can see, most of the space is set to the first partition. This is your primary partition with all your files. And then there's a uh, smaller space for the swap. And now I'm going to format the, the two partitions. Uh, the partition that's going to hold all the files, I'm going to format with the, the third extended file format. And then I'm going to use the command make swap to uh, format the second partition as a swap drive. And then you can enable the swap drive using the swap on command. And as you can see there, if you type in free, it shows up under your memory. Alright, now we can start copying our files over to our hard drive. First thing we're going to do in this process is make a directory that we can mount the hard drive to, so all we have to do is copy all our files to that directory. Alright, once we make the directory, we can just mount our hard drive to it using the mount command. And I'm also going to make the boot directory. Next, we need to copy all the non dynamic files to our hard drive. And we're just going to use the, the copy command, and we're going to use dash dash preserve to preserve all the specific attributes to the files. And then we're also going to use dash R 
to copy the directories recursively. And then the directories we're going to copy is the bin directory, the dev directory, the home directory, the pen test directory, the root directory, the user directory, the etc directory, the lib directory, the opt directory, the sbin directory, and the var directory. And we're going to copy all those folders to our hard drive, which is mounted to the backtrack folder that we created. And just push enter and it'll start copying. This could take several minutes, so just sit back and relax and don't touch anything. Alright, I time lapsed it here uh, so you don't have to wait. And as you can see by the system clock, it took about 13 minutes to copy everything over. It could take longer than this depending on your speed of your CD drive, whatever. And now we need to make the dynamic directories. And those directories are the mount directory, the process directory, the system directory, and the temp directory. And now we're going to remount the dev directory to our dev directory on the hard drive. And we're going to use the dash dash bind attribute. This will remount the dev directory to this, this new directory on the hard drive. But after we mount it, the content will be accessible on both places, on the CD and on the hard drive. And now we're going to mount the process directory to the process directory on the hard drive. Then we're going to use dash t to specify what type of file system it is. And now we're going to copy the Linux kernel to the boot directory on the hard drive. Alright, now we have everything copied over to the hard drive. We're going to use change root to change our root directory to root on the hard drive. This way we can easily uh, edit the Lilo config. This is what your Lilo config should look like. Uh, the first line is telling it what hard drive you want to boot from. Uh, the second line is telling it to uh, display the prompt so you can select your operating system. And then, you know, there's the rest of the stuff. Uh, the timeout, your VGA settings, your boot image. After that's done, type Lilo-V to save the settings. After that's done, we want to type in exit to return our root directory back to the root directory on the CD. And then we're going to type in reboot to reboot the system. Alright, here's this uh, Lilo boot menu. And all you have to do is push enter to boot into backtrack. Alright, here you go. This is backtrack 3 running off your hard drive. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, see you later.